the other important issue here as well is student autonomy and it's just we just wanted to really try and um, emphasize the point that it's a student midwives society and it's not a tutor society and whilst it's wonderful when you've got really supportive tutors um, it's important to make sure that the midwives and the society are the student midwives and society are making the decisions and the choices and looking at what they know to be the things that the students need and the gaps in the students you know experiences and really being able to fulfill those So benefits for students. Um, something else that we thought was a, an important point really is that if you're wanting to join a midwifery society or run a midwifery society purely from the point of view that it, it kind of looks good on your CV, that's there's so much more to it than that. It's so much more important because where we're coming from really is looking at better births for women. And as you'll see later on in the presentation, that we're looking at how we can gain skills that will support women um, and enable us to provide them with the births that they're looking for um, and the care that they're looking for postnatally and antenatally. Um, so the benefits for us are learning how to do getting involved with women and that brings its own benefits. Yeah, and I think it's that whole beginning of a career. This our training isn't just a degree, it's the beginning of a career and starting with the attitude that I'm going to, I am no better than anybody else, I'm going to work with everybody and learn what I can from them and from the women is so important because once we get beyond our training we'll be working with people from other universities, you know, other, they've trained in different ways, so having that collectivism already and working across the board now means that you've already got that ground in to move forward. And as well, of course, you've got your own support group, really, once you've got your midwifery society, not just when you're at university, but also as you move on, something else that we'll look a bit more at further on. But it prevents you from feeling isolated. Um, and it has actually been proven to reduce attrition rates, so it's keeping student midwives going and giving them the support that they need because we know it's tough and it's hard work and it can be very isolating because nobody really understands the journey that you're on apart from your cohort and other student midwives so we need to find ways to support each other the challenge is uh, number one i'm sure <laughs> everyone will agree is time um time to do the degree is um and then live a life generally is pretty difficult. Time generally, so trying to fit in time uh, whilst you're doing the society is, is a big, big issue. Um, and logistics, so how are you gonna how are you gonna meet up when usually you're never in university together, there's different cohorts. Um, and it just all becomes it, it can be quite difficult. And I think looking at those two things together, you can't do a society on your own. You have to have other people helping you. Um, and then being able to communicate with them sometimes becomes so t time consuming that you end up doing it yourself anyway. Mm. So this is what, facing those challenges and learning from other people, from other societies or from who've done it before you is so important to take what their experience and to move on from that. Mm. Learning how to delegate is a key, yeah. a key skill. Um, yeah, and gaining the trust of your tutors as well is really important because, you know, it, you're doing something in the name of the university and they need to know that you're going to do that responsibly and well. Yeah, I think it's very important. I think finally that the whole issue of the student union is a very big issue and if you need additional support on that, the RCM have got a lot of support available um, because the student union are looking at um, activities and societies in usually in terms of a physical activity or a, an interest group and midwifery societies are obviously completely different so i know when i was setting up salford it was very difficult in terms of getting them to communicate with me understanding that we weren't in university all the time we couldn't have agms when they wanted us to have them and then actually realizing that the student union are a source of funding that they will sponsor things for you so 
there is a lot going on there with student unions and I think that's definitely somewhere where the societies can support each other and say well actually at Cardiff we've got this additional funding or at Salford we've got this and you can ask then your student union can they do that as well so that's somewhere where we can join together as societies and find out. These are our, how we water our tree. <laughs> yeah, just an overall view of how midwifery societies do contribute towards better birth. We're going to look at normalising birth, at continuity of care and at reducing health inequalities. They're all things that can be done through having a midwifery society. So this is about how, how do you start a, a conference? And these are, you know, we all came into... Um, our degrees some of us may have done some sort of event management some of us may not um, and it's how do you start doing that so this is literally a wish list of what to do um, step by step through the process step by step through the process and I think really the main thing is you looked at delegation working together getting other people to do jobs um, the more that you can get people involved in building up a conference the better you have everyone joining in and working together and the, the better the conference is. It's like anything else where you've got a group of people, it's being able to help them to identify their strengths, finding what everybody's good at, and you know, because everybody can do something and it's just getting as many people involved as possible and as Jude and I were saying before, it's about just asking, telling people what you need doing and then seeing who steps yeah. to the front and, and will help you with that. Because sometimes if you identify jobs, then people are happy to do them. Whereas if you just say, okay, who's going to help with the midwifery society? And everybody's like, oh, I don't know what to do about that. But if you say, right, can somebody design me a poster? Can somebody get the goodie bag sorted out? Please can somebody contact this speaker? Then people will be helpful, you know, and feel like they can get involved. We don't really need to tell you about social media. <laughs> you're, on it, you're already on it. Um, but that is really a benefit, I think, of midwifery societies. Is what um, what has really come out is that we're part of the midwifery community. The midwifery community have welcomed us, and midwifery societies are coming together, supporting each other. They're sharing each other's event. And I know when Salford has an event on, the University of York put it on their website, and then Bradford put it on theirs, and when Huddersfield had theirs, we put it on ours, and everybody is coming together and working together and it's just beautiful that that sort of relationships and bonds are being formed um, that we're all working respecting each other and working for the better of the women that we serve which is just amazing and it's just extending that community beyond your own university so we have these great communities within universities but it's extending it to all the other universities so that we're all working together because as we, I think we mentioned before you know when you leave university and go to a place of work you might not be working in the same place you were working on placement you'll be working with you know women from other universities men from other universities and people you know who you've had the opportunity to get to know on social media so it's been Really wonderful to see everybody coming together. So these are a few of the, we just put, we grabbed a few posters basically. A selection. Yes, <laughs> to show to show the different things that Midwifery Society is doing, all are very different, all looking at different issues, um, that showing that there's no one set way of doing things. Everyone's done it different, so that's just brilliant. So these are our, the fruits of our tree. Um, and again, going through better births, and these are the three objectives of better births, is promoting normal births, continuity of care, and reducing health inequalities. Um, and this is the better birth logo, and showing that it works through the whole continuum of pregnancy, from antenatal, interpartum, through to postnatal. And just really getting the message across that students have a really big part to play in this. You know, it's just as important. Um, for us to be promoting normal birth as for all the midwives who are already out there and probably more so in a way because we're taking it forward and going in fresh if you like when we finish university. Um, so just this piece here from Sarah Snow talking about a student midwife playing an important part. Okay, We're a kind of a buffer if you like for women with almost a touch of normality for women because we've not had the experiences that might have made us slightly more medicalised as a lot of people have when they've been in that environment for a long time. Um, so yeah, just talking about becoming professionally socialised. So 
sometimes I think it's easy when people well, Jude would know more about this than me because she's already qualified. <laughs> but I think it's easy when you come out of that university and go into a new culture and a new society. It's resisting the urge to take on the mantle of that existing culture, which may not be what you were uh, thinking you were going to be like when you were a student. Yeah, and we move, I think we, we look at continuity of care in terms of actually continuity of care for us as students becoming really qualified and how important it is to retain the passion and the, the the integrity of a student midwife into a midwifery career. Kind of taking your principles with you, yeah. if you like. So there's a few more of the um, normalising birth events that, that um, midwifery societies have put on. All kinds of breech birth and pregnancy and cancer. Um, so continuity of care. Um, we were looking at the importance of alumni membership um, it's definitely an additional funding screen, uh, stream from a really practical point of view. If you keep your students want to become midwives, keep getting money from them. But also it means that you have them to tap into. So you've still got the students, but you've got these newly qualified midwives who can talk to students about their experience, about what they've learned. But equally, it's so important for newly qualified midwives as bags of evidence about how the transition to newly qualified midwife is quite a difficult transition and actually having that contact with students is really really important and it could bridge that gap of how do you support them through and, and keep them from becoming medically socialized or you know yeah, yeah. so it's support both ways really so we've done um, a survey at Salford, and I'm sure many of you, other of you, have done quick surveys around you, you know, with, within your cohorts to find out what do they want you to do as a society, um, and what are their priorities. And one of the really interesting things I found from our research was that students wanted to go into jobs that gave them continuity of care, so they showed really massive preference for midwifery led units or con uh, community midwifery um, so we know it's a priority for students as well yeah it's worth doing surveys and little bits of research if you can with the um, members of your society because the more bank of evidence we build up you know the more useful that's going to be in future for informing future midwifery societies mm -hmm. so just talking about that transition again um, I, I'm from student to newly qualified midwife. And again, this is some of the um, events that other universities have put on. So here's Queen's, they, they did a natal hypnotherapy day. And Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Okay, and then looking at the third part of the better births is reducing health inequalities. And we've just looked a little bit how midwifery societies can help to do that. Um, so it's about empowering students again to put individual women at the centre of their care. So, for example, at Salford, our uh, conference that we did this year was looking at reducing health inequalities. Um, and so we had lots of really fantastic speakers in talking about FGM um, and a lot of things that affect women. And so we have got that extra bit of knowledge, that extra bit of experience, chances to discuss these things that we wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah, it's been very beneficial. Definitely, and I think it's that thing of, we're not saying that universities aren't covering these issues because they Indeed. are. Yeah. However, what we're saying is that students, when allowed to do themselves may identify different health inequalities different projects that universities haven't looked at um, and sharing that amongst themselves is actually empowering the students to look at different ways to help the women that they care for so they may work at one trust but may have seen the work of another trust via a midwifery society event and be able to say Oh, do you know that at Alden they're actually doing this work and maybe we could tap into that and it's just looking at those additional tools that the student midwife and then when she becomes a midwife can use in her kit to care for women. Yeah. I mean in, in addition to that as well there's the, the time factor is the same for tutors as, as it is for us in many ways. Tutors are trying really hard, working hard to fit everything into the timetable and so anything that we extra that we can add and support you know is going to be useful for us too. I think we've gone 
Also, this is the, uh, the brilliant stuff that Swansea were doing in terms of raising money. So this is, again, something else that midwifery societies have been doing. It's not just about events for them. They've actually been doing events for other people and raising money to support um, really important charities that have been going on. So this is a big bike ride. and. It looked like from the photographs they had a lovely time on the beach. <laughs> Benefits of going to a uni by a beach. Sometimes as well, it's nice to just get out of your daily routine and to do something completely different. And I think societies can encourage people to sort of step outside of their comfort zones in a way. You can do things that you perhaps wouldn't have expected that you would have done before. Maybe a huge bike ride, maybe speaking in front of a group of people, you know, just giving midwives, student midwives, chances to enhance their skills. That's one, another lovely Huddersfield one, yeah. GM conference. That was the photos of everyone. And they got really amazing top level speakers there. That And what was amazing was that conference was £25. And a professional conference with speakers that frankly weren't as good was about 200 and something pounds. Yeah. So the benefit for a midwife to attend that was that she got her CPD without spending as much money. So the benefits were for everyone. This is another advantage really, is it's giving midwives and student midwives more opportunities to socialise together and to learn from each other. Um, and I think just having people come to the conferences who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to, perhaps, you know, newly qualified midwives don't have a lot of spare cash floating around them, mm -hmm. but they still want to keep up their practice, improve their practice and learn things. Um, and so the midwifery societies give them a chance to do that too. So we'd come up with this midwifery society midwife, a better birth midwife. Yeah, so we'd imagine that um, she joined at, in 2014 at university, became a midwifery society member, grows in confidence and knowledge from seeing the third year students doing what they've done, organising the event, that they're asking her to get involved and her ideas have been involved. And then as she moves through, She's going to qualify in 2017. She's had all that involvement in the midwifery society the whole time. So she's still getting continued support from the society now as a newly qualified midwife. Um, and then looking through the next three years, she's going to become a better birth midwife because she's still being able to inform the practice of the students through the midwifery society and she's got their ongoing support. So that was our imagining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really bridging that gap again between student, newly qualified midwife and then more experienced midwife. So um, this is the lovely beach that Swansea yeah. were on, um, that the midwifery societies grow positive self-care habits. You know, the, the emotional drain of doing our degree, of doing our work is well documented with tons of evidence. Yeah. And to build those sort of self-care habits now and, and those networks now is really important. And I know that Swansea and Queens do sort of regular, um, I think it's family days yeah. they have. So it's days of, of everyone coming together and recognizing what's going on, but if they're getting that extra support, it's really important. Yeah, it's all about self-care, really. And as well, you know, I, I don't know, I can probably speak for Jude as well, but I've made some lovely friends who are yeah. very society and people in other cohorts that I wouldn't otherwise have no. met, you know. Yeah, and the you know, midwifery societies are really worth celebrating. I know that many have won um, awards nationally, particularly at the moment, Bradford have done amazing yeah, really well. Uh, but within universities as well, I know obviously we won within our university within the Student Union Awards and I know most universities probably do that. And I think we, we did kind of rock the boat in bit in terms of our university because they were a bit like, who are these midwives? Where have they come from? Why are they winning everything? Why are they so hard working? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean they've just put in a conference? Um, so, you know, it, it, I think midwifery societies are really, really worth celebrating. Yeah, worth shouting about. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, because loads of people contributed yeah. to our presentation. When we were working on it in sort of October last year, we did send messages around to, you know, the friends we've made in different societies and say, can you help, can you send us, send some us photos? a photo? And everyone did. Yeah. And that's how amazing, that's the collectivism we've got, and that's what we wanted to celebrate, that how amazing everyone is in the Midwifery Society. <laughs>